Hello, Fabric community. This is the August edition of the Fabric Monthly Update. I am Jason Himmelstein, Principal PM Manager for Content Strategy in Microsoft Fabric. I hope that you're aware by now that we are bringing FabCon, the Microsoft Fabric Community Conference, to Europe in just a few weeks. The inaugural FabCon Europe will almost certainly sell out, so be sure to register and join us at aka.ms forward slash Europe dash FabCon and use the code MSCUST, MS. C-U-S-T, to save 200 euro. For more information about what we're going to share in this video, please be sure to check out the Fabric Updates blog. The link is in the video description below. Let's go ahead and get into it. Power BI Copilot and AI. You can now ask Copilot for data from your entire semantic model in Power BI Desktop. Just tell Copilot what you're looking for, and Copilot will query your model to answer your questions with a visual. To use this new capability, you have to have the preview feature for Copilot chat pane in report view turned on. If you've already done this, then there's nothing else you need to do to utilize this new capability. Just go out and give it a try. Power BI reporting. Visual level format strings now in preview. Visual level format strings are here, providing you with more options to configure formatting. Originally built for visual calcs, the core ability that visual level format strings provide is the ability to format visual calcs. Since visual calcs are not in the model, you could not format them unless you were using them as a data in data labels or in specific parts of the new card and new slicer visuals. Now with visual level format strings, you can. Visual level format strings, however, are useful even without any visual calcs. Dynamic per recipient subscriptions now generally available. Dynamic per recipient subscriptions for Power BI and paginated reports are now generally available. They are designed to simplify distribution of a personalized copy of each report to each recipient of an email subscription. You define which view of the report an individual receives by specifying which filters are applied to their version of the report. The feature is now available in Sovereign Clouds as well. Deliver subscriptions to OneDrive and SharePoint is now generally available. Do you have reports that are too large to be delivered by email or eating into your email quota in a short period of time that need to be moved to a different location? You can now deliver Power BI and paginated report subscriptions to OneDrive or SharePoint. With this capability, you can schedule and send full report attachments to OneDrive and SharePoint locations. Updated save and upload to OneDrive flow in Power BI. Beginning in the first week of August, desktop users should see a preview to turn on the updated save and upload to OneDrive experience in Power BI. To enable this, navigate to the preview features section of options in Power BI desktop. Users will then need to select saving to OneDrive and SharePoint uploads the file in the background. With these updates, we've improved the experience of uploading new Power BI files to OneDrive and easily upload new changes in the background. Data limit. We're excited to roll out a great update that will give you more control over your visuals. We are introducing the data limit capability, your new best friend for managing performance hiccups. Have you ever had a visual that could just not handle the heat with too much data? Well, those days are over. With data limits, you set the maximum data load for a single session per visual. It's like putting your visuals on a diet, ensuring that they stay fit and perform at their best. Visuals. Shapes and Line Enhancements. We've been fine-tuning the visual enhancement of your reports, columns, bars, ribbons, and lines, and have given you the reins to craft those Cartesians with precision. With our latest update, we are bringing the legends and tooltips up to speed. Now they will reflect the style enhancements you have applied to your visual shapes and lines, just as you intended. No more mismatched presentations, just seamless, stylish consistency. All right, time for some demos. First one is visual level format strings, now in preview, by your own Hert. If you've used visual calculations, you will have noticed that there was no way of formatting these calculations. So for example, I have a visual calculation here that calculates the profit percentage by dividing uh, the profit by the sales amount. Notice how, even though it's clearly a percentage, it's shown as a decimal number. And of course, we have the format function index, which I can use to format this. But this has the downside that it turns the output into text. So if I apply this, 
even though it looks fine on the visual matrix, you'll notice that the visual no longer works because now it's not a numerical value anymore. It's a text. So let's undo this real quick. Um, there is, however, good news. We are introducing visual level format strings, which allow you to format values on a visual. We're introducing these as part of the visual calculations preview. So you will need to enable that first before you can use them. You can use these visual level format strings, however, to format not just visual calculations, but anything on your visual. So I'm going to format the visual calculation from before as a percentage. So I'm going to into the format pane, switch to the general sections, and here's a new category called data format. In here, I can now select my profit percentage visual calculation, and I'm entering the same visual, uh, the same format string as before. And now notice it is now formatted as a, as a percentage, as well as the visual still works and is showing uh, the visual as before because it's a numerical it's a numerical value still and it's now nicely formatted uh, in a percentage. This is great, but we don't stop there because it, as I said, it this this doesn't just work for visual calculations. It also works for anything in the model. So it works for anything on the visual. So let's format the measure that is on this visuals, visuals here. So I have a profit measure in my model. Let me just open that up and we can see it's formatted in the model as a whole number. Okay, that's why this is now shown as a whole number on this table visual over here as well as here on this column chart. Now let's say that for this column chart specifically, I would like that to format that number as a currency, including the dollar sign, but I don't want to change the format in the model. I can do that now thanks to these visual level format strings that we've just seen. So with the visual selected, I'll go into formatting pane again, general data format, and now let me select the profit and then say, indicate I want to format this by as a currency. So now notice that the data label as well as the tooltips in this visual have updated to reflect these new settings. But again, the table visual on the right hasn't because that is using the model level format string. So far so good, but we're not done yet because I've shown you two levels of format string. The lowest level is the model level. This of course applies to anything in the model, which means columns, measures. Um, but it also means that visual calculations cannot have a format string on the model level since they are not stored in the model. So the next level up is the visual level. We just use this to change the profit measure uh, format to a currency in this specific visual. We also use that to format a visual calculation before. Now, there is another level, the third level called element level format strings. And this level controls the format for your fields, measures, visual calculations for the exact element in the visual. And a format string set on a higher level overrides any lower level format string. So a visual level format string overrides a model level format string. Well, an element level format string overrides both the visual as well as the model level. This level, this element level uh, format string is currently only, only available for a limited number of visuals and elements, but it will be expanded in the near future. And the most prominent place you can use this today is in the data labels. So let's set a different format string for the profit measure in the data label here on this visual without changing the model nor visual level format string. Remember, what we're expecting to see is an unchanged format in the table visual because that's using the le model level format string, which is set to a whole number. We also don't want to change the format of the tooltip because we want to keep that as formatted as a currency, but we only want to change the data label. So that's where we will use the element level format string for the data label to override the format for just the data label. So to do that, let's get into the format settings again. Go to visual, data labels, find value, and then indicate I want to work with profit, and then set the display units to custom. Now I can enter a custom format code in here. So I'm formatting now as a currency, but then without any decimals. As you can see, the data labels have changed. Notice that it doesn't show any amounts and any decimals anymore. However, the tooltip shows the decimals as before because that is using the visual level format string. And finally, the model level format string is set to a whole number, so that's why the table here on the right hasn't updated. 
To get started with these visual level format strings, you first need to enable the visual calculations preview feature in your desktop settings. And then afterwards, you can use these three levels of format strings, model, visual, and element level, to provide you with the maximum flexibility to get the formatting exactly as you want it. Our next demo is dynamic per recipient subscriptions that is now generally available by Nurapama Srinivasan. Extremely excited to announce the general availability of dynamic per recipient subscriptions. Let's get started with a quick demo. So here I have a sales overview report to which I'm going to subscribe. So I go ahead, click on subscribe on my report, and then create a subscription, dynamic per recipient subscriptions. Now here I can go ahead and pick the data set that has the recipient data. So here I'm going to select the employee training data, click on next. I'm going to pick uh, all of the information I need for the delivery of this subscription. So I pick the employee name, I'm going to pick their manager's name, I'm going to pick the email that we want this to be delivered to. I only want this to be delivered to employees who have completed the work that was assigned to them. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick status and I'll define the filter there. And I'm also going to pick category. I'll show you why in a minute. So first is I want to filter by status. I want to only send this to employees who have completed the task assigned to them. So I'm going to go ahead, click on completed. As you can see, I'm going to minimize the filter. You can only see those employees who have completed the training here. So I go ahead, filter the data set, go next. Uh, I'm going to email this, so I'm going to go ahead and pick subscription name to be whatever the sales overview. I want the recipients to be picked from my uh, data set that I picked. So I'm going to go ahead and say and pick the email. I'm going to just have, uh, uh, I'm not going to add a specific email subject. It'll pick whatever is default. All of this looks fine. Go ahead, click next. I'm going to map my data. I'm going to go ahead and say my industry is the same as category. Um, so that mapping, something that I want to do here. And then I want to be able to send this every day at 8.45 p.m. That's what I want to do. Okay, go ahead, review your subscription. All of this looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and say save and close. Once you've done that, uh, the subscription should fire. I'll just show you a sample subscription as I'm demoing this. This is what it would look like. And then the report gets del delivered to those who have uh, the statuses complete. Thank you. The next demo is deliver subscriptions to OneDrive and SharePoint is now generally available. Welcome back, Nira Palma. Do you have really large reports that you send on a regular basis to your email? and you want to solve for the problem of extremely large inboxes, look no further than our new feature where you can now subscribe to reports and send them to your OneDrive or SharePoint locations. Let's get started and learn how to do this. So I've used a sales and marketing report for this demo. Go ahead and click on subscribe. Once you do that, create a subscription and say, standard subscriptions. Over here, I've named the subscription. I've left it as the default executive overview. I'm sending it to myself. I'm going to attach it as a full report. You have to if you need to send it to a SharePoint or a OneDrive location. I'm going to go ahead and click on PDF. I'm going to send it to the OneDrive location. I'm going to go ahead and pick my subscriptions folder. I have a folder called ODSP already created, and I'm gonna make sure it lands in this location. Okay, this feature is now generally available um, for, for you to use. I've gone ahead and picked the schedule here as well. So start date is just today. Uh, I want this to be sent only monthly uh, and say I wanna send it on the first of every month at 9 a.m. Same time zone. And then I want to also make sure I'm not getting a lot of these. So I'm just going to say 26th is the last day, right? 
go ahead, save this subscription. Okay, so it's called Executive Overview. It's going to my OneDrive SharePoint. You can now see that the report has been delivered. Our next demo is updated save and upload to OneDrive flow in Power BI by Anita Ambalavanan. With our new Power BI file, we're going to go and save it into OneDrive. We're going to locate the correct location in the OneDrive recent folder, rename our file, and hit save. From there, since we're saving a new report for the first time, a dialog box will open indicating that the file is getting saved to OneDrive. Once the file has been saved, we can edit and modify the report. Once we make these changes, we can hit the Save button, and the report will automatically upload in the background to OneDrive in the original location we saved it at. Once the file has been uploaded in the background, we can click on the toolbar and get a link to the file in OneDrive. Power BI Modeling. DAX Query View in the web. Write DAX queries directly on your published semantic models with DAX Query View for the web. DAX Query View is no longer only available in Power BI Desktop, but easily accessible when you're in the Workspace or Semantic Model Details page. Let's go ahead and see a demo of this by Zoe Douglas. DAX Query View, already available in Power BI Desktop, is now available in the web. From your workspace, you can right-click on a published semantic model you have permission to edit and simply choose Write DAX Queries. This will work with semantic models in import, direct query, or direct lakes through ridge mode. Here I have a semantic model in direct lake mode, built from a lake house getting data from one lake. So this DAX query is really querying the one lake. My sample query shows me the top 100 rows of my date table, and I can use other quick queries to get data from other tables and columns in my model using generated DAX queries. And I can quickly find out how many rows are in my fact table by writing the DAX query. Here, I want to evaluate a scalar value, so I put my DAX formula in curly braces to return it as a table for the results query. Using the format DAX function allows me to see the value a little nicer. And I can even format the query to make it nicer to read. And here I see I have 1 billion rows in this table. In addition to typing DAX queries, you can add or change measures. Let's create a new measure to show the average cost per order I already have a measure similar to this called average profit per order, so let's save some time and use that as a template. I use quick queries to define with references and evaluate this measure. Now I see the DAX formula for it, but also the FAX formulas used in the reference measures. This way I can see the entire calculation flow. Not only can I see them, but I can edit any of them and then rerun the query to see how the results will change. Changes to the query scope measures do not change the model measures automatically, and I can hover over the measures in the DAX query to see which DAX formula is which. To speed up the measure creating process, let's first copy the average profit by order. I know there is a shortcut to copy selected lines. I can use the command palette to quickly find it and then use it. Now two quick changes to the measure and I'm done. I can use the same trick in the evaluate block so that I can see the new measure in action and simply click run. This looks to be the expected results. The new measure is not in my model, but there is a code lens action available to add new measure. But first, let's clean up the change I made to the orders measure and format all these measures. Now I can see a button next to run shows I can update the model with all of these changes at once. Now I see my new measure is added to the model. Microsoft Fabric customers can not only run DAX queries with Direct Lake Power BI semantic models, but also use Fabric Copilot to help write and explain DAX queries in DAX Query View. So take your data analytics to the next step today by writing DAX queries. Power BI Embedded Analytics. Narrative visual with Copilot available in SAS Embed. The narrative visual with Copilot is available for user-owned data scenarios, or SAS, and Secure Embed. This means when a user embeds a report, the narrative visual, in a solution where users must sign in, they will now be able to refresh the visual with their data. This is the first step on our Copilot embed journey. The narrative visual with Copilot is now supported in embed for your organization scenarios where the user owns the data and in Secure Embed scenarios. 
Now there is a little bit of setup required for the embed your organization scenarios to work properly. So let's go over to Microsoft Azure and check it out in Enter ID. Let's go to your registered application. And once we're here, we can go down to API permissions where we can see all of the permissions that your application already has. And we're gonna add a new one that will allow Copilot to make sure that it's working properly within your application. Under APIs my organization uses, search for Power BI Service and click Delegated Permissions. Here we can search for our specific permission under ML Models. If you expand the options here, we can click this first one, ML Model, Execute All. This is the one we need to make sure that Copilot works properly in our embedded solutions. This is all we need to do for this setup here. So let's go ahead and refresh the embedded solution that I already have. It's very simple. It does not look as good as the ones that you will create, I am sure. But let's go ahead and refresh this. Um, I already have a report loaded here that has a narrative visual and you can see that I am not getting an error here. It is loading properly. And here I'll see my narrative load. And it of course is gonna work perfectly with my slicers and all of the filters that I have on the page so that my end users and myself can stay up to date with all of the data in real time right here in my embedded solution. We can't wait to hear all the ways that you use it as well. Visualizations. This month, we're highlighting a whole bunch of visualizations for you. We have editor's picks of the quarter, new visuals and app source, and another list of visuals for you to take a look at. Please enjoy. Fabric core. Workspace filter improvements to support nested folders. Since folders were introduced in workspaces, it can be hard to find items sometimes because they're hidden away in the hierarchy. We have upgraded the filter experience to support filtering through the entire workspace or through a specific folder with all its nested folders. Fabric OneLake. OneLake data access roles improvements. OneLake data access roles allow for granular security to be defined within a lake house. This month, we've updated data access roles based on key feedback. The Assign Roles page in the user interface has been redesigned to make it easier to understand access. The page now has the Add People or Groups control front and center, with less emphasis on assigning users via item permissions. Item permissions control has been rebuilt for ease of use, including a new user count to show the number of users that will get added to the role based on the permissions you select. The members list now includes sort options and shows newly added users and groups with an icon to help validate pending changes. Let's go ahead and take a look at a demo of these new OneLake data access role improvements by Aaron Merrill. Introducing the newly refreshed Assign Roles pane for OneLake data access roles. To get started, navigate to the Manage OneLake data access page from your LakeHouse. Select an existing role and click Assign. You can add users or groups to the role by typing the names directly in the Add People or Groups box. Dynamically add users to the role based on their Lakehouse permissions using the Add Users Based on Lakehouse Permissions dropdown. You can now see a count of how many users will be added based on your selections. Lastly, you can easily view and search for role members and remove them using the Assigned Users list at the bottom. Fabric Synapse Data Warehouse managing view order behavior of Fabric warehouses. View order is a write-time optimization for the Parquet file format, enabling direct lake mode with Power BI. It applies special sorting and compression to Parquet files, offering query benefits, but potentially increasing data ingestion time in Fabric Warehouse. We're excited to announce a new feature in Fabric Warehouse that allows you to manage view order behavior at the warehouse level. You can now disable view order providing better control over the ETL performance when view order is unnecessary. This enhancement is particularly beneficial for scenarios where view order optimization may not offer significant advantages, such as in a typical ETL process with write-intensive staging tables. Delta Lake Log Pause and Resume Fabric Warehouse publishes Delta Lake logs for every table created in your warehouses. Any modification to a warehouse table will be reflected in the Delta Lake log within a minute of transactions being committed. This enables other analytical engines in Microsoft Fabric to read the latest data on user tables without any data duplication. This feature allows you to pause and resume publishing of Delta Lake logs for warehouses. When publishing is paused, Microsoft Fabric engines that read tables outside of the warehouse will see the data as it was before the pause. 
This ensures that reports remain stable and consistent, reflecting data from all tables as they existed before any changes were made to the tables. It is especially beneficial if you have many tables and reports that are frequently changing. It will minimize the risk of data inconsistencies. Alter Table Add Nullable Column Alter Table Add Nullable Columns is now generally available. This feature allows for adding new nullable columns to previously created Delta Parquet backed tables in a warehouse in Microsoft Fabric. In the ever evolving data landscape of data organizations, schemas are shifting and changing to keep up to date with the influx of new data. Whether your schema modifications are few and far between or a regular occurrence that constantly needs to adapt to changing requirements, we have you covered. Our goal is to ensure that customers have everything they need for a seamless warehouse experience, and we continue to strive towards ensuring our T-SQL surface area meets the needs of our customers. Truncate Table. Truncate Table in Fabric Data Warehouse, enhancing data management capabilities for the user is now generally available. Truncate removes all rows from any warehouse user table that the user has permission to update while preserving the table's metadata. This command is beneficial for situations that demand quick data removal and table maintenance. It is ideal for scenarios where staging tables need regular data clearing without altering the table structure. Truncate operation is only allowed on Parquet-backed data warehouse user tables. Mirroring Azure SQL Database. We've heard your requests and we're excited to extend our capabilities with support for mirrored tables with additional SQL's Dynamic Definition Language, DDL. Now operations such as drop table, rename table, and rename column can be seamlessly executed while tables are in the process of mirroring. Mirroring integration with modern get data experience. You can use a more intuitive experience with modern get data to connect data source for mirroring. On the homepage of data warehouse experience, click any mirroring module to get started. Enough of all this talking. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of demos. We're going to get started with managing V order behavior of fabric warehouses. We are excited to announce the capability to manage the V order behavior of fabric warehouses. V order is a right time optimization for the parquet file format, which enables direct link mode in Power BI. It applies special sorting and compression to parquet files, offering query benefits but potentially increasing data ingestion time in Fabric Warehouse. You can now disable vorder, providing better control over ETL performance when vorder is unnecessary. This enhancement is particularly beneficial for scenarios where vorder optimization may not offer significant advantages, uh, such as in typical ETL processes where you have write-intensive staging tables. Disabling vorder on a warehouse is a non-reversible operation. You should thoroughly test the performance of your warehouse queries and ETL processes to determine if this option is suitable for your scenario before disabling it. There is no way to re-enable the order, so please make sure you test this thoroughly in your scenarios to see if you, if you benefit from this. Now, in the demo, what we'll do here is we'll check sys.databases to see the current status of the order on my warehouse. And it tells me the number one, which means that it is enabled. Now, we're going to run an outer database command. Current set the order off. And we're going to run only this statement. And this is just a metadata operation, so it is instant. And now, when I query sys.databases again, you will see that it's set to off, meaning any ingestion that you perform from now on will produce parquet files with vorder disabled. Once again, this is a non-reversible operation, so make sure you thoroughly test your ETL processes and your queries to see if that helps you or not. Next, we have a demo of Alter Table Add Nullable Column. Let it announce the general availability of Alter Table Add Nullable Columns. This feature allows for adding new columns to previously created Delta Parquet back tables in a warehouse in Microsoft Fabric. In the ever-changing data environment of organizations, schemas are adjusting and evolving to match the continuous flow of new data. Alter Table Add column allows users to modify the structure of your database without requiring significant complex data migration processes. We remain committed to ensuring that our T-SQL surface area aligns with the requirement of our customers. 
by default any column that is being added using the alt table add column tsql statement is nullable the user may specify null in the syntax as well all other alt table operations such as drop rename adding non nullable columns are currently blocked the new columns are added to the end of the table in the order of their definition the user will not be able to alter the order of the columns I'm going to add a new column, status, to the product table. I'm now going to select the table to see the new column. As you can see, the value for the new column is null, since the column is added to an already populated table. Once shortcut to the lake house are established, the new column will be readable from both SQL Analytics Endpoint and Spark Notebooks. We will very soon add support for additional altered table capabilities such as drop and rename. Stay tuned. The next demo we have is Truncate Table. Truncate Table is generally available in Fabric Data Warehouse, enhancing data management capabilities for the users. Truncate removes all rows from any warehouse user table that the user has permission to update while maintaining table metadata. This is useful in scenarios where rapid data deletion and table maintenance are critical. Truncate is useful in scenarios where staging table requests frequent data purging without altering table structure. In Fabric Data Warehouse, we retain data files after truncating to support time travel queries. Garbage collection will then eventually clean up the data file as per the configured data retention policies. We inherit the same syntax from SQL Server. Let's verify that the row exists in the customer table. Now let's truncate the table. And let's verify that the table is now empty. Truncate operation is only allowed on a parquet back data warehouse user table. There are few limitations such as truncating a specific table partition is not allowed in fabric data warehouse. Truncation of a lake house table views Table reference by materialized views, system tables, system TMVs are also not allowed. And the last demo that we have for this area is mirroring Azure SQL database. So here I am in the uh, fabric uh, mirroring, actively uh, replicating the uh, adventure work sample database. And uh, you could see uh, there are a product and sales uh, tables which are being replicated. Uh, let's go ahead and perform uh, some rename column and rename table lemon operations for one of the tables here called product logs. So it has five rows which are currently there in the product log. So let's go and do some changes to the DDLs. So let's go ahead first change the uh, name from let's say it's called log DESCR to be more meaningful. So let's call it product log description. Let's go and execute this. And I'll go refresh here, and you can see it's changed here. The table is still being actively replicated. Let's go back in Fabric and look at the change. Now, Fabric SQL Analytics endpoint for the mirror database. And you can see that the rename which we did to product log description is now accurately reflected. Now let's go ahead and change the name of the table from instead of product logs to something more meaningful. So in this case, we'll rename from product logs to call it product logger. Let's go and execute that. It's reflected the name here in the database as product logger. Let's go back in Fabric and see the change. As you can see, the name has now been changed to product logger from product logs. Now let's go ahead and drop the table uh, completely from being mirroring into Fabric. So we'll go back into our Azure Data Studio and execute the SQL to drop the table. Now in case case, we change it to product logger. So go ahead and change it to product logger and drop the table. Let's go ahead and refresh it, and the table is not there anymore. And let's go back to Fabric and see if it has been dropped from being replicated. 
as you can see, the table which we deleted is not reflected anymore in the Mirror database in Fabric. Let's go ahead and confirm in the SQL Analytics endpoint as well that the product logger table indeed does not exist. And here you go. We do not see the table exist anymore. Thank you for watching the video. Fabric Synapse Data Engineering. Announcing MS Spark upgrade to Notebook Utils. Beginning in August, the library MS Spark Utils will be rebranded Notebook Utils. This change reflects our commitment to providing the best tools and utilities for your data processing needs. While Notebook Utils will be backwards compatible with MS Spark Utils, we want to inform you that new features will only be added to Notebook Utils namespace. Therefore, we strongly recommend that you start replacing the old namespace with a new one for your projects, and the Notebook Utils will only be supported on runtime versions 1.2 and above. Please note to upgrade your runtime versions as well. Import Notebook UX Improvements The Import Notebook feature has recently been enhanced, making it more accessible and more intuitive. With this update, you can effortlessly import notebooks, reports, or paginated reports using the unified entry in the Workspace toolbar. This improvement streamlines the process, ensuring a seamless experience for developers. Fabric Runtime Lifecycle We recently released the lifecycle of Apache Spark runtimes in Fabric. Our team diligently delivers new versions, ensuring that they are of high quality, well integrated, and supported continuously. Each version includes about 110 components, and as the runtime grows, we make sure it integrates smoothly into Microsoft Fabric and Azure. We cautiously approach new preview runtime releases, aiming for an experimental preview in roughly three months, although the exact timeline varies per case. The latest runtime, version 1.3, based on Apache Spark 3.5, is currently in public preview, and we're preparing it for general availability. Runtime 1.2, based on Apache Spark 3.4, is already stable in GA. We've announced the end of support date for Runtime 1.1 on Apache Spark 3.3, which will be deprecated and not available after March 31st, 2025. Fabric Synapse Data Science. Semantic Link Labs is now live. Recently, Michael Kowalski of the Microsoft Fabric Cat team released a Python library called Fabric Cat Tools, for Fabric Notebooks. This library includes more than 120 additional functions which can extend Semantic Link's capabilities ranging from automating the migration of Semantic Models to Direct Lake, analyzing Semantic Models via Best Practice Analyzer, showing Vertipak Analyzer statistics, wrapping the full tabular object model, and much, much more. You can even automatically translate your entire Semantic Models metadata into any language in seconds. All of this is self-contained inside of the Fabric ecosystem. Apply ML flow tags on ML experiment runs and model versions. We've released a new feature that allows users to apply ML tags directly on their ML experiment runs and ML model versions from the user interface. This enhancement empowers users to add annotations, track changes, and incorporate additional metadata seamlessly. Whether you're fine-tuning a model or running in extensive experiments, Tagging will enable you to organize and contextualize your results more effectively. Track related ML experiment runs in your Spark application. We have a new feature for you that is designed to help users track related ML experiment runs within their Spark applications. This feature allows users to monitor the progress of their Spark applications, which can create one or multiple experiments and related experiment runs. By navigating the monitoring hub, users can click on the Spark application and go to the item snapshots to find experiments and runs created within that application. Monitor ML experiments from the Monitoring Hub. Integrate experiment items into the Monitoring Hub with this new feature. With this enhancement, users can track experiment runs directly from the Monitoring Hub, providing a unified view of all their activities. This integration includes powerful filtering options, enabling users to focus on the experiments or runs created within the last 30 days or specified periods. Use PREDICT with Fabric ML models. We're releasing an update to CodeFirst AutoML in Fabric. With this update, we now automatically log the input and output schemas for non-Spark models trained using AutoML. This experiment allows users to seamlessly move from training with AutoML to making predictions by leveraging the built-in Fabric PREDICT UI and CodeFirst APIs for batch predictions. This streamlined process ensures a smooth transition from model training to making accurate and efficient predictions. 
enhancing overall productivity and ease of use. The AI skill is now in public preview. You can now build your own generative AI experiences over your data in Fabric with the public preview of the AI skill. With this new capability, you can build questions and answering all AI systems over your lake houses and warehouses. With this new capability, you can build question and answering AI systems over your lake houses and warehouses. You can configure the AI to respond to questions in a way that works for you and your organization by providing instructions and examples. Many generative AI experiences are generic. They do not understand all the nuances that come along with your data. These systems can output very reasonable looking answers that are ultimately incorrect. The issue is that this nuance is not expressed in the schema or the data itself. How should the AI count sales across different time zones? Or what should you do if the customer ID is not unique? These kinds of issues arise frequently in the real world of data systems. These kinds of issues arise frequently in real world data systems. And only you have all the context needed to provide these answers. Now on to the good stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first demo. Semantic Link Labs is now live. Semantic Link Labs is an open sourced Python library on Microsoft's GitHub. It is an extension of Semantic Link with over 190 additional functions. You get total control over the tabular object model with 100 neat functions that make it easier to access fabric artifacts programmatically. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to use Semantic Link Labs to check out your semantic model's properties and quality, and even translate the whole thing into different languages super quickly. Let's go to my Fabric workspace. Here's my report titled Retail Analysis Sample. The item lineage view shows it comes from a semantic model also called Retail Analysis Sample. Now, over to the notebook to kick things off by installing Semantic Link Labs and importing the package. You don't have to worry about authentication because Semantic Link Labs has got it covered. You can just jump into using these functions straight in Fabric Notebook. With just one line of code, you can pull up stats of the semantic model using Vertipack Analyzer. You'll see the total size, table list, rows counted for each, partition details, and more. And you can easily export those stats into a zip file or a Delta Lake table for further analysis. If you've used the best practice analyzer in tabular editor before, here's something new. With Semantic Link Labs, you run those rules and some extra ones we've published for tabular editor inside Fabric Notebook. Without stepping out of the Fabric context, you can check multiple semantic models to make sure they're on point. Let's take a look. With a simple function, I can group all violations by category and see how many violations we've got. Hover over the blue link for a sneak peek at that rule and click it to dig into why it matters and why you should stick to it. Time to dive into translations. If your teammates speak various languages and need to work with semantic models or reports crafted in English, well, it used to be a headache but not anymore with Semantic Link Labs. Just point out the semantic model's name and set your languages. Let's go with Italian and Chinese for now. In a few seconds, the whole model is translated. Every table, column, measure, hierarchy, everything's ready to go. Now, let's switch to the report and change it to Chinese. We can see the whole report and all the metadata are in Chinese. So, easy. You can also leverage Semantic Link Labs to migrate your semantic models to Direct Lake and much more. Check out our GitHub repo and all functions within Semantic Link Labs are fully documented there. We warmly welcome your contributions to our GitHub repository as well. Thank you and stay tuned. Next up, we have Apply ML Tags on ML Experiment Runs and Model Versions. Users can now apply MLflow tags to experiment runs and model versions directly from the user interface. From my notebook, I've created an ML experiment and logged additional metadata. Here, I can explore and view the applied tags. I can also open the experiment item to view, update, and add tags directly from the user experience. Applying tags to runs from the user experience makes it easier to organize, find, and manage specific runs. You can also switch to the run list view to view and compare tags across multiple runs. 
I can repeat this process for model versions by creating and applying tags from code and then updating them later directly from the user experience as well. This tagging experience helps users easily organize, track, and manage different model versions across their organization. The next demo we have is track related ML experiment runs in your Spark application. Users can now track related ML experiment runs within their Spark applications. This feature allows users to monitor the progress of their Spark applications, which can create one or multiple experiments and related experiment runs. I'll first filter my monitoring hub to look at Spark applications that were created by me. By clicking on a Spark application and navigating to the item snapshots, I can locate experiments and runs that were created within that Spark application. This feature makes it easier to debug Spark applications, especially when they impact specific machine learning workflows. And last but certainly not least, we have a demo of AI skill. Let's take a look at how you can bring custom generative AI to your data in Fabric. Let's create a new Fabric item called an AI skill, and let's see what it does. I'm going to name it Loyalty Member Support Insights because what I want to create is a custom generative AI tool that is an expert that can answer questions about loyalty members and customer support cases. The first thing I'm going to do is to add my data from one lake. I can just select the lake house and now I can select the specific tables that I want the AI to have access to, and that's it. Let's ask how many support calls we've had from loyalty members but break it down from the source that the loyalty member joined from. And now behind the scenes, we use our AI models to generate a SQL query and give an answer. Here, we let you put generative AI directly on your data and then integrate it into your own custom solutions. And the skill is really just focused on what it knows, which in this case is Contoso Outdoors loyalty members data and support cases. Let's ask another question. Who is the most recent loyalty member to make a support call? And the answer is Angelina Schlitz. This is a good answer, but I'd like to include some supporting info. And this is where I can add some notes for the model on how I want it to behave. I'm going to tell it to include some additional columns when responding about loyalty members. And now let's rerun the question. And this time the answer is bringing in the additional info. Now let's ask for all support calls from Angelina. And here's a list of the calls. Now let's break down all our cases by where they came from. And here's the breakdown. Now let's do one more question. Let's ask for our top 10 loyalty members. And this time we actually got a wrong answer. It just listed the members because it didn't know how to rank them. So if I quickly look at the data in the table that I have, I can see I have a column for lifetime spending. Let's give the model another note to use this column when asking about top ranking members. And now we can get the correct answer. So finally, once I'm happy with the result, I can go ahead and publish this. This experience can give me an endpoint that I can use to send questions to. But this is really an ideal fit for integrating this capability into other RAG-based AI orchestration options to give them access to experts on your data in Fabric. And stay tuned for other ways to integrate and use Fabric AI skills. For example, for building custom Copilots in Microsoft Copilot Studio, or to extend Microsoft M365 Copilot. And hopefully, this is giving you an idea of how you can bring custom generative AI to your data in Microsoft Fabric. Fabric Real-Time Intelligence. Fabric Real-Time Hub Teaching Bubble. The Fabric Real-Time Hub now introduces teaching bubbles that provide a step-by-step -step guide through its major functionalities. These interactive guides allow you to seamlessly navigate each tab of the Real-Time Hub, offering a clear understanding of the value and core functions. By following these teaching bubbles, you can effectively kick off the Get Events flow, ensuring a best-in-class streaming data ingestion experience. This feature is designed to enhance your learning curve and maximize the capabilities of the Real-Time Hub. Fabric Data Factory, Fabric Data Pipelines. We're excited to announce the release of two powerful new connectors in Fabric Data Factory data pipelines, Salesforce Connector and Vertica Connector. The Salesforce Connector using Bulk API 2.0 in Fabric Data Factory offers a high performance solution for integrating Salesforce data with Microsoft Fabric. 
Bulk API 2.0 is designed to handle large volumes of data efficiently by processing batch records asynchronously, making it ideal for large-scale data migrations and synchronizations. This connector enables users to seamlessly extract, transform, and load extensive data sets from Salesforce into various destinations or vice versa. By utilizing this connector, organizations can accelerate data operations, streamline workflows, and leverage the full potential of their Salesforce data alongside other data sources, ensuring robust, scalable data integration and analytics. The Vertica connector offers unparalleled ease of connection to Vertica, a high-performance distributed SQL database designed for big data analytics through on-premises data gateways. By leveraging the Vertica connector, organizations can harness the robust analytical capabilities of Vertica alongside the scalability and flexibility of Fabric Data Factory, thereby enhancing their data workflow and accelerating insights across their enterprise data ecosystem. Data Warehouse Connector supports TLS 1.3. The introduction of TLS 1.3 the introduction of TLS 1.3 support in the Warehouse Connector marks a significant improvement in data security for data integration processes. TLS 1.3, the latest version of the Transport Layer Security Protocol, provides improved encryption, reduced latency, and enhanced privacy over previous versions. By supporting TLS 1.3, the Data Warehouse Connector ensures that data transmitted between the data warehouse and other systems is protected with state-of-the-art encryption mitigating the risk of cyber threats and data breaches. This update not only strengthens the security posture of data operations, but also optimizes performance, enabling faster and more secure data transfers. Organizations can now confidently leverage the Data Warehouse Connector and Data Pipeline to integrate and analyze their data, knowing that their information is safeguarded with the most advanced security protocols available. Easily connect to your Azure resources by modern Get Data Experience and Data Pipeline. You can easily browse and connect your Azure resources automatically with the modern data experience of Data Pipeline. With the Browse Azure experience, you can quickly connect to Azure resources without manually filling in some information, such as endpoint, URL, etc. Currently, we have supported connecting Azure Blob, Azure Data Lake Gen 2, Azure Cosmos DB, and Synapse through Browse Azure Experiences. To browse the Azure resources, you need at least a reader access role on the data source. To be able to connect to the resource with OAuth, you need at least storage blob data reader role on the data source. Well, that's all for this month. Please visit our Fabric community forums at aka.ms forward slash Fabric community. It's the best place for you to connect with others and get answers to your questions. Next month's edition of the video will drop to align with our announcements at Fabcon Europe. We look forward to sharing more with you in the next month and hope to see you in person in Stockholm. And please, tell us how we can do better. We are listening. Thanks for watching, and be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Have a great month.